Hi guys, it's Blackie from Shaman's Forge Woodcraft. Okay, why Japan to 10? That seems to be the most common question I'm getting. I saw this a great deal coming up. I saw this with the old Sucrets, um, cough drop cans, Prince Albert cans, all kinds of cans that would be treated this way for use in the outdoors. And to be honest, I didn't question it when I was young. It's just that was an indicator that that was something out there, you know. I saw them used as small pocket tackle boxes. I saw them used as pipe tobacco carriers, of salt carriers, of whatever. And it was a handy, quick way of doing it. Why even burn it off? Well, a couple of different possibilities. One... And I'm going to show you this up close. This is the completed tin that I showed you earlier. This tin is food safe as it comes. And I got another one here. If you're going to be carrying loose food like jelly beans, uh, sugar, coffee, tea, and it's going to be loose in the can, don't put it in the fire. Use it the way it is. If you don't like what the color on the outside is, paint it. But if you're looking for a tin like I'm going to be using here, and this is going to be carrying the predominant idea I've got to carry it in it, is condiments. Right now I've got sugar and Hershey bars in there. It's just something to help keep the insects out of it, and it's going to be dropping down into my bush pot. So I've got a little bit of sugar in for cooking my teas, whatever. And by Japaning it, I've sealed the pores. Now, what's really happened is I've heated up the tin. It has burned off the paint. And then just as soon as it cooled down enough I could hold it, I have taken and put a couple of drops of olive oil on it and smeared it out and therefore uh, oiled it. Now, it's food safe, that oil. So in here, where I'm going to be putting the uh, sugar and etc., it's safe. And that's the tin that has been, quote, quote, Japaned. It gives it a, for lack of a better term, it gives it a, uh, a patina. And I like the way it looks, personally. I can also look at this at a glance, since each one of these tins are different, know what's in it. And also know that's one of my tins. That's not one of the wifey's tins. That's my tin. Okay. What are the uses of this tin? Well, the most blatantly obvious is the fact that I can carry stuff like this pre-packaged in it safely. Also, in Woodscraft, where I'm in a tight spot, the tin, by doing it this way ahead of time, if I have to use this as a char tin, I normally carry nails with me anyway as part of my kit. It'd be very simply just turn this upside down the lid and poke a hole in it to have a char tin. And therefore, any of the stuff that was on the inside of it, me trying to make char, could be contaminated in the charring process if the tin hadn't been burnt ahead of time. Um, many years ago in living history, we were going to make a... Uh, bunch of char cloth and a friend of mine had a great big old Christmas type cookie tin, one of them big ones. And we cut up all kinds of, you know, sheets and stuff and filled it up and put it in this big old fire and it cooked and cooked. And we didn't burn the paint off, you know. Well, whatever was in the coating on that made flame resistant char cloth. <laughs> Cause once we got it out, it looked good, but it wouldn't hold a spark and even worse you could hold a match to it and it would glow for just a second and then go out we'd made flame retardant char cloth uh, after that we always made sure we burned out the tins first just to make sure but this tin also can be used in a different way in that if I am like they say thinking about the next fire and I'm low on resources I have a fire going what I'll do is I'll make myself a, basically a pair of long chopsticks. And I'm going to take and put the bottom of the tin sitting there, and I'm going to pick up several coals and drop into the bottom of that tin. 
when I've got a good layer of coals on there with very little ash, and that's where I can pick it up and go, and, and blow off any ash, I'm going to snap the lid onto it, and that's going to smother those coals, making char. So when I open it up, I've got something that readily catches a spark. So by tinning, by taking it and japanning it this way, it makes for a, uh, well, come on. Come on. Yeah. 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 Did you go see the food bowl? Well, the food bowl's over there. Yes, it is. I'm a Rio, the neighborhood cat. He come up to the wood lot to follow me up there and say hello. This isn't my cat. He's just a neighborhood cat. But he likes bushcraft. Okay, too. sorry, I got off on a little tangent there. But, one, is aesthetic. I like the way it looks. Two, it does give it a little more rust resistant. This is, for lack of a better term, black oxide, which is dead rust, and is not easily, you know, back to rusting. So a little bit of oil on it and a little bit of that, it makes it more resistant in a pack. Three, I'm using it for condiments, so I want food grade oil inside, not WD-40. If I was going to be using it for tenders or something like that, WD-40 it. Don't worry about the, the uh, edible food. Next, it can be used as a smothering tin for making char, and it can also be used with a poking in the hole to make char cloth. It makes it a very versatile piece of kit, and it's very aesthetically pleasing in my pack. Just my two cents worth. Hope you like the idea, guys. Please leave any comments below. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.